Hi booktube! My name is Sarah and welcome to The Bookish Knitter. Today I am coming to you with my weekly reads video. This is for week number 27 and this is for the 4th of July through the 10th of July. So I read six books this week. Yay! That is awesome. So um, yeah, I'm very pleased with that. Uh, if you want to jump ahead to any of the individual reviews for the books that I'm going to talk about, please feel free to use the timestamps listed below. So first of all, a couple things before we get started. I do have my coffee this morning. I went to Starbucks, you guys. Um, yeah, I don't normally get Starbucks coffee, but I do like it. I get the blonde roast, which is their light roast, I guess. And um, it's here in Canada, it's called the True North Blend. And I actually quite like it. Um, and I added, of course, my pumpkin spice creamer when I got home. So I am having a pumpkin spice <laughs> drink from Starbucks. PSL time, guys. Okay, so I am a big fan of the pumpkin spice lattes. I will I will be honest. I don't indulge in them very often. It's like a weekly treat, um, you know, when they're when they're out, usually on Fridays, because uh, they can be very high in calories. Let's be real, right? I mean, if there's whipped cream on your drink, it's not exactly a low fat beverage. So but they are so yummy. So anyway, um, I find though, I'm going to complain, they come out too early. And I know people are like, oh, shush, they're delicious. They should be out all year round. But no, there's something about them that is, it's fall. When the PSLs come out, pumpkin spice lattes come out, it's fall. And I think last year they brought them out at the end of August. And even like I joked, like I have pumpkin spice creamer that I found in the grocery store. I still, like I bought it because it's there, but I still feel it's too soon. Like I just find that commercially, the holidays get rushed so much. Like we barely are out of summer and all of a sudden they're pushing stuff for like the late fall. Like for me, the pumpkin spice latte should come out like late September, you know, and then be out in October, November, and then like mid November, bring out the Christmas stuff. And I feel the same about Christmas. I feel like the second the Halloween decorations come down, suddenly it's Christmas all over the place and it just feels like a rush. And then by the time you get to the holiday itself, you're like, you're over it. You know what I mean? So I wish that commercially they would like hold back on stuff, but that's me. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to get into that this morning. Um, so a couple things before I jump into what I read this week, I do have a few things to show you guys. I'll get into that in just a second. But for one thing, just in case you're curious, for those of you who did not watch my Friday reads, just because you you might be wondering, I am wearing a halter monitor. So that's what you can see here. I do have shirts that come up higher and I could have, but I, I, this is looser because I wanted that because this is it doesn't hurt at all. It's just like a giant sticker with this like little device stuck on it that I've got to wear until Monday around lunchtime. So on Monday around lunchtime, I get to take it off. But I'm just to the point now where the sticker itself is getting very, very itchy. So I, the looser shirt, the better because it's more comfortable. So in case you're curious, that's what that is. There's nothing wrong. They're just checking my heart rate. They're checking you know, uh, my arrhythmia, you know, because I always have weird beats all the time. Um, and it's just routine. There's nothing wrong. It's just routine. Cause I had a couple of people ask that on Friday when I said I had to have this test done. So everything's cool. As far as I know, everything's cool. <laughs> I don't talk to the doctor until the end of August, but I feel fine. So that's the main thing. Um, so yeah, so the little bit of a haul. So those of you who might follow, like who listen to the Categorically Romance podcast that me and my best friend Bree do, um, we have an Instagram and yesterday on our Instagram, we got on and did a live show and we showed off a lot of this stuff. Now, for those of you who didn't see it, I thought I'd show it here. The other thing, if you guys want me to do a full on unboxing of this, like not unboxing because I've already opened the box, but like a full on haul of this, please do let me know. And I will happily film that video. Um, but I'm just not sure how much interest there is. So that's why I decided not to do it. Um, like I wanted to gauge your guys' reactions first. So we have a friend of the podcast. She works at Harlequin head office downtown. And she reached out to us and she said she was cleaning out her office. And she had a whole bunch of dare books in physical format. Were we interested? And we said, yes, please. <laughs> So she sent both Brie and I a box of these. So I thought I'd just show you guys three of them just to show you the, the different types of books that they had. So 
here in North America, we did not get the Dare books in physical format, but they did in the UK. So I have two of the UK editions here. They're both Mills and Boone, but the differences between the two is that I got some of them as a single title. I got, I think, three or four in a single title. So this is Ruled by Anne Marsh, which I'm a big fan of Anne Marsh. She also used to write for The Blaze Line. She is fantastic. And then mostly they came out, though, in these two-in-ones. So you got two books in one volume, which I kind of really like that because for shelf space scenario, you know, to collect like all the books that come out in a series, instead of getting like four or six individual titles, to get two or three bind ups to me just is kind of a fun idea. But so this one is The Player by Stephanie London and Our Little Secret by Rachel Stewart. I'm a big fan of both of these authors. I do have to admit I am now, you know, Rachel Stewart and I, we're old buddies, we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> she, we interviewed her on the podcast a couple of weeks ago and her episode should be coming out, I think at the end of this month. And she was just an absolute delight. She is such a supporter of the podcast and so, so sweet and so amazing and so pretty. Oh my gosh, is she pretty. So yeah, I got this. This is, like I said, these are the ones from Mills and Boone. So if you lived in the UK, my viewers in the UK are probably very, very familiar with these. Now, here in North America, we did not get the Dare books in physical format. We only got them as ebooks. However, they did produce them in physical format, I think for promotional purposes, I'm guessing, because there's no ISBN number on the back, no, you know, it, typically in the back of books, there's no ads. There's no, like, you know what I mean? Like, usually there would be ads or something like that in the back. Um, let me see for... Yeah, just to show you guys like the difference, like so see the back of these, you're getting ads and they don't have that here. But I did get about 10 of these and I am thrilled because like I said, these were not available in physical format to us here in North America. So this is the North American, this is what the ebook would have looked like, the cover. Um, and I've actually read this one, which is why I'm showing it to you guys. This is Her Guilty Secret by Claire Connolly. This was really good. I believe it was a boss employee type romance and it takes place in London. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Like this, I think was one of my first Dare novels and I really did enjoy it. So, you know, it's funny, like, I'm like, oh, Dare isn't really my thing, but then I read them and I really like them. So it's just me, I think. I need to get over myself. And now that I've got a box of these, I guarantee you I'm going to be reading as many as I can. So yeah, so that was very, very nice of her to send our way. And then she sent us some swag. I have to say, I'm so excited. So the first thing that she sent us, oh my gosh, you guys. Um, so this one is, um, it's a pen. It says into, into sexy heroes. Harlequin has the perfect read for you. So I believe these were promotional when the blaze line came out. It doesn't say blaze on there, but you'll see our friend is wearing a, a shirt, dude wearing a shirt. So <laughs> if I do this, I don't know if it's going to work. Um, but when you tip the pen one way or the other, um, his shirt comes off. <laughs> And it's kind of brilliant. I got, I got it done. I was able to get it to work yesterday, but not today, of course. But I jokingly, when I emailed this, the person back, I said, you know, thank you so much. I was debating on actually taking the pen into the office to use it, but then I'm afraid. There we go. There we go. But I am afraid. <laughs> but I'm afraid one of my coworkers may walk off with it accidentally. Anyone who works in an office knows if you've got pens on your desk and someone comes over to your desk, you're losing a pen. It's just the way it goes, right? But yeah, is that not hilarious? Oh, I absolutely love it. But I have to say, this is my favorite thing. I am beyond stoked about this. Guys, look at this. This is a notebook. Look at it. It's an old Harlequin cover, um, number 267, and it's I'll Bury My Dead by James Hadley Chase, a Harlequin book. So way back in the day, way back in the day, um, when Harlequin first got started, they were not necessarily 100% romance. They did a lot of mysteries, but these very noir type mysteries, I mean, it would have been the 50s, right? Because Harlequin started in 49. So this would have been the 50s into the 60s. So yeah, I am so thrilled to have this. I, I, a part of me really wants to use it, but this other part of me is like, no, this, would this not be the perfect notebook, you know? So then it got me thinking, right? 
if I didn't sell them, like if I didn't sell them and I just made them for me to take a Harlequin cover, right? And make it bigger, like, like get a digital image and make it bigger and then print it off. I could put it on like a three ring notebook and then those could be like, you know, or put it on cardstock or something like that. And again, I wouldn't be selling them. So it's for my purposes only, but to have something like that would just be amazing. Like, absolutely. This just makes me so happy. I, again, and then the back of it is like what would have been on the back of the book. Is that not delightful? So not long ago, um, was it my friend Pippa? Um, I think it was <clears throat> sent us a book and then she sent us these bookmarks. So if you watch the video, um, that Brie and I did on the Instagram, Brie's book, cause she got one of these as well. Hers is actually this cover. And I just thought that was so funny. So this one is number 972. This is more of a romance one. But yeah, they also produce these postcards. I wish they would bring this back. Legit. Harlequin, if you are watching this, any, anyone who's a fan, we would love this stuff. Bring out another line of notebooks. I will buy 50 of them, you know, in different covers to have. What Brie and I got talking about was how awesome would a calendar be? Like, an, like a, you know, a 12-month calendar, but each month would have, like, different image. Would that not be amazing? I'm telling you. And a set of postcards? Can we make this a thing? Who do I need to speak to? Harlequin, are you listening? Please do that. Okay, so I've been yammering on for like 10 minutes now. <laughs> Let's get into the books that I finished this week. So the first book that I finished this week was Mother May I by Jocelyn Jackson. I gave this book four stars. Um, it has a publication date of April of 2021. It is a mystery thriller, and it was narrated on audio by Jocelyn Jackson. Now, I don't want to share too much about what this one is about because it is a thriller. It was good. Um, it was a domestic thriller. Um, pretty much it starts off with this little boy is kidnapped and this woman is like, to get your son back, you need to do this. And the story kind of goes from there. I really don't want to say any more than that. I went into this one not knowing anything about it. I saw the cover on my library app um, because I was looking for an audiobook to listen to and I saw the cover and I'm like, oh, that looks creepy. And I've read Jocelyn Jackson before. Why do I always draw a blank at the other one that I've read? It's a purple cover. Anyway, so I liked her work. So I was excited about this one and I enjoyed it. Like I said, it was a four star read. I have to admit for a thriller, it was much more of a, I really wouldn't, I mean, it was a thriller, but it wasn't like the standard, like, Ooh, what's the twist? Like I, if it was the twist, if what happened was the twist, it wasn't very twisty. <laughs> It wasn't anything that made me go, oh my, you know, like this, right? I pretty much had figured it out already. So, but it was still a really enjoyable read, really entertaining. Um, and yeah, if you like a good mystery thriller, definitely, definitely check this one out. Um, next book that I finished was Mallory Hates Boys and Jim by Anna Martin. This book I gave three stars to, uh, it's Babysitter's Club book number 59, publication date November of 1992, and of course this is a middle grade fiction novel. I've said it before, Mallory is not my favorite of all of the babysitters, um, so this one was kind of like, nah. You know, I actually found her in this one to be a little bit bratty. I mean, she is 11, so let's be real. But like, because she's no good at volleyball, she doesn't want to do it. And she's getting teased by the boys. So the whole premise is, is that typically like the girls have their gym class and the boys have their gym class. And now they're being like put together to do volleyball and the boys are picking on her. And you know, because she's not very good, which is mean. And the teacher should step up and say something like, you know, like the one kid was like serving towards her face. Like, come on. Like I, it, there's parts of it where I felt bad for her, like seriously, but then she would just get totally bratty about it be like, well, I'm no good at it. So I'm not going to do it. Well, that's not how life works. You know, maybe ask the teacher. Now the, the, her gym teacher wasn't the nicest woman either. However, there was a bunch of things. She just, Mallory kind of annoyed me in this one, to be honest, didn't love it. Whatever. I'm still enjoying my reread through this series. The next book that I finished was Match Made in Paradise by Barbara Dunlop. This book I gave four, four stars to as well. Um, this is a NetGalley read, so thank you very much to Berkeley for sending me an eart copy of this one to read and review. Book number one in the Paradise Alaska series. This one has a publication date, May 2021. 
It is a contemporary romance novel, and on audio, it was narrated by Donabella Mortel. So I did get this one on audio from my library. This was so good, you guys. This was so, so good. So this is about a woman by the name of Mia. And when she was like 18 or 19, she was a model. She was doing modeling. And she doesn't have any family. I think her parents both passed away. So this much older man named Alistair takes her under his wing. And he is he owns like this fashion house, very, very, very well known, lots of money, very influential, that kind of a person. She's kind of an up and coming model. So it starts off where like he's her mentor and then they fall in love and he's divorced. He's got two grown children. His kids are either two years younger or two years older than Mia. I think it's younger, I think. So anyway, so they were married for a good number of years. Now, then he died. Now, when he died, he was 50 and she was, I think, 28. So it's what, 22 year age gap? Am I doing the math on that one right? 40, 40 to 50, 32, 50 minus 28, 22, right? Yeah, 22. So it's a 22 year age gift difference. So this is, this all happens at the beginning of the book. So she of course is upset that her husband has passed away, but it's stated several times in the book that towards the end, like the last number of years, it was much more of a caregiver situation with her, with her husband, because he had a heart condition and that's what, how he died. So then there's this whole thing with the fact that he left her the clothing empire and his kids are a little miffed about that. So all this stuff starts, she ends up going to go see her cousin in this small town in central Alaska, which is where the story takes place. She meets a guy named Silas. He's a bush pilot and romance ensues from there. And I really like this one. My biggest thing was the fact that they kept repeating over and over and over again, how her marriage to Alistair, you know, started as a mentor thing. Then eventually they, you know, became lovers and then she became like his caregiver. So like for her to be starting a relationship with Silas less than a month after her husband's death, this is why it was okay. Um, you know, it just, you know, so that just kind of bugged me a little bit. It didn't bug me the fact that she started this relationship each to their own, you know, um, if she had really loved, like if, if she had done this and she, you know, claimed to have actually, you know, she didn't not love Alistair, but it definitely morphed into much more of a friendship as opposed to a relationship, a romantic relationship. Does that make sense? She loved him as a friend at the end. And it was sad losing her friend, her very good friend who took very good care of her. And she in turn took very good care of him. But yeah, it's just, it's like, okay, you don't need to keep repeating it, but it's like, she kept telling everybody. Um, and it was very much also a fish out of water story, which is a lot of fun. Cause she's like a former model who lives in Los Angeles. And here she is in small town, Alaska with bears and, you know, one school and one bar and you know what I mean? So it was a lot of fun. There's a second book coming out, um, which I did look ahead. I do have it on NetGalley as well. It's, um, Mia's, uh, man, not her manager, her lawyer, um, named Marnie. Uh, it's going to be her story. And I'm very, very excited about it. I cannot wait. This was also a closed door romance for those of you who are interested if it was sweet or spicy. It was definitely closed door. Um, I liked it a lot. I thought it was really, really cute. Um, the next one that I read was not closed door and that was Slow Dance at Rose Bend by Naima Simone. This book I gave four stars to as well. This is book number 0 0.5 in the Rose Bend series. So I do plan on reading the first book in this series later this month. So I just wanted to finish something quickly. So I picked this one up. It's only 40 pages. It's a novella and I read it in like 30 minutes. Um, so I enjoyed it. This came out in April of 2021. And it, of course it is a contemporary romance. Like I said, it's a novella. This is the story of Cherry, uh, Sherry, excuse me, and Maddox. So he's been living in Rose Bend for a number of years. He runs the local bar and she is a friend of the family, uh, a friend of one of the families in town. And she's a jewelry designer. She just got out of a very long-term relationship, not the most healthy of relationships. He was emotionally abusive to her, like with the things he said to her, like she's fat and she's lazy and this, that, and the other thing. And she had a health scare. I'm not going to divulge what that is. It's a 40 page book, you guys. <laughs> 
and um, her and Maddox meet at the bar at somebody else's engagement party and they end up hooking up and they spend like the next two weeks together and you know that's again it's a 40 page novella. <laughs> It was really well written though. I am a big big fan of Naima Simone and I really like her writing and I really really enjoyed this book. It was really cute. Very very spicy like I said on the spice meter. You're definitely going more this way. Um, yeah it, it was good. It was enjoyable. It was you know it was a quick read and it was fun. Um, and no not the last book. The second last book I finished this week was The Mystery at Claudia's House by Anna Martin two Babysitter's Club books this week. Um, this one I gave three stars to as well. Babysitter's Club Mystery number six, publication date November of 1992. And this of course is another middle grade fiction novel. Um, there wasn't much of a mystery to this one to be honest. And I've said that about the Babysitter's Club mystery books, that they're not really mysterious for lack of a better word. So this one, Claudia at the beginning notices that things in her room are starting to go missing or be, are being moved around or whatever. Very quickly comes to find out that it's actually Janine, her big sister, who's kind of going in and taking her stuff. Now, Janine is very studious. So she has this extremely high IQ and she's taking like college level courses and she's like a junior in high school. And they're trying to figure out why she's suddenly wearing makeup and why she's dressing differently. So that's more of the mystery. It's more like Claudia and the mystery of Janine is what it should have been called. Um, so yeah, I mean, I remember this one. It's pretty obvious, I think, to the reader. Unless, well, you know what? If you are a younger person, I don't think it would be obvious. But as an adult who reads her fair share of romance novels, clearly <laughs> you can figure out that Janine has a boyfriend. And it was cute. I mean, I liked it. Um, I really like this. Every time that Claudia has a book and it's like her and Janine, I really love that sister aspect because both of them are so very, very different, but yet they get along most of the time. And I really like seeing that. So this one was cute. Again, I'm enjoying my reread through the series. So I, um, I'm not, I, I still want to obviously continue, but the one thing I started to notice is because I went to go pick up the next book, which is going to be another super special. And most of the books, either in the regular series, the mystery series, the super specials, to be honest, to purchase them for Kindle or for Kobo is like almost $6 They're five to $6. And I'm like, legitimately, I could sit and read one of these in about an hour. So that hurts. That hurts for me to pay that kind of money for an ebook. Um, so my library has all of them. So going forward, I'm going to be dipping in and out of Nancy Drew and Sweet Valley because Nancy Drew is available on Scribed and the Sweet Valley books, except for the first 12 are all available on Kindle Unlimited. So I'll be dipping in and out of those as well. Um, waiting for my holds on the next Babysitter's Club books to come out essentially or to come in. So that's pretty much what's going to be happening going forward. So you'll be seeing me reading, like I said, Nancy Drew and some Sweet Valley, which will be fun. Um, I have some um, in the fall up here, right there on that, because that top shelf is like my back to my childhood shelf. Um, in the fall, I think in October, I have four books by Christopher Pike. Anyone else who's of a certain age um, who, you know, was reading those Fear Street type books back in the 80s and 90s. You might remember Christopher Pike. I loved his work and I came across four of them at a thrift store a number of months ago and I've been holding on to them to read in October. So those are the ones that are going to be the ones that get read in the spooky season because they are spooky books. So I'm looking forward to those. So it'll be nice to kind of gravitate away a bit from the Babysitter's Club stuff and delve back into some of the other books that I read when I was uh, growing up. And the last book that I finished this week, you guys, this was so, so, so good. Oh my gosh. Was The Marriage Game by Sarah, uh, Des, uh, oh goodness. Desi? Desi. I think it's Sarah Desi. So this book I gave four and a half stars to. This is book number one in the Marriage Game series, publication date of June of 2020. This is a contemporary romance and it was narrated on audio by Sunila, uh, uh, Sunila uh, Nankini. Oh my gosh. So originally my plan had been to read the second book in the series, The Dating Plan by the same author. And I have that one from NetGalley and my library had a copy and I was like on audio and I'm like, great, I will listen to the audiobook. And then I realized, oh, it's a second in a series. And normally I'm not one to care if I read books out of order, but I looked and the library had this one available. I'm like, all right, let's listen to this one. And then I'll read the, the Dating Plan next month, right? So I 
pick this one up and am I ever glad I did. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So this is the story of Layla and Sam. And Layla uh, just suffered a very, very bad breakup. She was living in New York City. She was dating a guy who was like a YouTube celebrity. They had an epic breakup. It was caught on video of her like throwing his stuff off the balcony. And she ended up losing her apartment, her job, her boyfriend, like all in the same go. So she ends up flying home from New York back to San Francisco. Um, her parents own an Indian restaurant. So she's looking to get her life back on track. And she, when she was in New York, she worked at like a recruitment center, like um, to help people find jobs. So she decided to branch out on her own and start her own employment agency, essentially. So her parents owned this restaurant downstairs and upstairs there were um, uh, office space. So she was going to take over the office space, but the father had already rented it to a guy named Sam. And, um, but he's like, well, I'll break the lease with him. This all happens at the very beginning. So you're not um, getting spoiled for anything. We'll break the lease with him and then you can take over the office and start your business. But before the father has a chance to do that, he suffers a massive heart attack and he's in hospital. So Sam comes in and, you know, the two of them kind of butt head sharing this office. They're very, very different people. Definitely opposites attract. I mean, even down to their jobs, because his job is he works for a company that does restructuring. So he goes in and his job is to fire people, whereas her job is to get people hired. So it's essentially a hate to love romance with a giant loud, funny, wonderful Indian family. I just love that so much. Um, there is a great backstory for Sam as to why he's doing what he's doing. You know, Layla's dealing with her own things as well. Guys, this book was so good. Please, please, please go and pick it up. This does get spicy um, on the spice meter. It goes more towards, it's definitely open door. Let's put it that way. It's not fire. Like it's not real spicy, but it does, it is open door. If you wanted me to compare it to another author, I would say it's along the way of Jill Shalvis's type of spice. Um, so good guys. I mean, I was, uh, telling Brie yes, uh, this morning I was messaging her and to tell her that I'd finished this book. And last night my husband and I went out to go grab dinner and stuff like that. So we were going to be in the car about 15 minutes and I had like 15 minutes left of the audiobook. And I said, I'm just going to listen to this in the car. So I plugged it in through the, the MP3 and played it on the speakers in my vehicle. And even my husband was chuckling along at some of the things like the family just, I don't know what it is about these big boisterous families in books. I just love it. I love it. And this book, and that made it in this book. So I'm really, really looking forward now to reading the second book. I'm glad I started with this one. And there is going to be a third, I think, as well. So yeah, if you guys like these kind of books, definitely, definitely check it out. This truly was, I feel, very much a romantic comedy. It was really good. Um, so yeah, so that is everything that I have read this week. So what am I currently reading? So I haven't started it yet, but today I'm going to be starting on audio, um, Kissing Mr. Right by Michelle Major. This was not on my TBR for um, July, but I am participating, I think I mentioned a couple weeks ago, in a challenge on the Romance Readers Reading Group on Goodreads, which is a bachelor challenge where you're kind of teamed up. And this week's theme is to read a book. Oh my gosh, guys, this was so difficult. I it took me like an hour and the whole time, literally this was staring me in the face because I'm such a fan of this author, is to read a book either set in Colorado or by an author from Colorado or set in a city in Colorado. You know what I mean? So finally, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Michelle Major. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she's from Colorado. We talked to her on the podcast. So she's from Colorado and this book is set in Colorado. So that's why I've gone ahead to read this one. I grabbed it from Scribed on audio. So I will be starting that today. Um, the book that I'm currently reading um, on my Kindle is um, Sunkissed by Casey West or Cass, is it Cassie West? Cassie West. And this one I'm really, really enjoying. It's a YA contemporary and guys, it just makes me happy. It just makes me happy. So it's about a girl by the name of Avery and she's between like, it's just before her senior year. It's the summer before her senior year in high school. And her parents are like both professors. They've got the summer off and every year they go on these like epic trips with the girls, her and her younger sister, Lauren, who's 15. So Avery is 17 and they end up going to this like wilderness resort. And from the way it was described, for those of you who love the movie, Dirty Dancing, 
Kellerman's, like the resort that the family goes to in Dirty Dancing. That's what it reminded me of, but modern day. However, there's no Wi-Fi. <laughs> so the girls are like, what do I do? And the younger sister, she has a YouTube channel and she like was going to document like her whole summer at this cabin, at this, you know, this resort cabin place in the woods. So Avery ends up um, befriending some of the kids who work at the resort. And the story kind of goes from there. It is adorable. I'm about 40% on the way through it, you guys, and I absolutely love it. I'm hoping to finish it either today or tomorrow. We shall see. And I am still reading. It's it's in my room on my bedside table. Is um, Naughty Brits, um, Sarah McLean, Sophie Jordan, Louisa Edwards, Tessa Gratton, Sierra Simone are the authors. And I'm slowly reading through this one. I think I talked about this one in my Friday Reads, maybe. But I just was struggling getting through this one. And I think it's A, because it was the physical edition, B, because I just tend to read faster on, on digital and it wasn't available on digital until I found it at my library, but I was still struggling to get through it. Like I just wasn't itching to pick it up. And I think, I don't know if it was the length, but I think it's something to do with novellas, like anthologies, excuse me. Like you finish one of the stories and you're like, you feel like, okay, I'm done the book, but no, I'm not done the book. There's still four other stories in here and they're longer novellas, you guys. So Brie said to me, she's like, read it slowly. Just read a couple chapters every day and you'll get through it. So that's what I'm doing. So yes, I am still reading that one, but slowly it probably will not get done until closer to the end of the month. Um, but the other book that I am reading right now, um, on my glow sap from Harlequin is, um, Missing in the Desert by Dana Mentick. So this is a love inspired suspense novel and it is about, now these are faith-based fiction or faith-based stories. And, um, our main character, I think her name is Mara, um, her sister 16 years earlier, or she was 16 when she went missing. I can't remember. She went missing in Death Valley and clearly she's presumed dead after all this time. And, Pardon me, Mara and her brother have been running into some trouble. Like there was a bad car accident. Her brother's now in the hospital. She just got injured at a part in the book. And there's a guy by the name of Levi who's trying to help and trying to get all this figured out. It takes place, like I said, in Death Valley, California, which is a very, very interesting location, in my opinion. Actually in a small town, probably fictionalized, just outside of Death Valley called Furnace Falls, which I think is like the best name ever for a town in and around Death Valley. <laughs> <laughs> so I am really enjoying this one. It's just been a bit slower to get through. I haven't been picking it up as often, but um, I do want to get this one done in the next day or so. So that's everything that I am currently reading. So anyway, you guys, all right, that's it. That's all I have for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, let me know if if, just for funsies to see how many of you made it to the end of the video, if you want me to do an, an unhaul or a haul of all this dare stuff that I got, leave a flame emoji in the comment section below. <laughs> or even if you just got to this, no, yeah, no, leave me a flame emoji if you want to see the dare, um, the dare haul. So, um, coming up this week, if you guys vote yes on the dare haul, then I will go ahead and do that on Wednesday. But tomorrow, I'm actually going to do the mid-year book out, the mid-year book freak out tag because everybody else has been doing it and I want to do it too. So I'm going to do that tomorrow. It's going to go up tomorrow. I'm going to film it next. So anyway, guys, that is all that I have for today's video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. And until my next one, everybody take care and happy reading. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.